Today I'm showing you a singleton that I add to literally every Godot project. It solves a really common issue that I'm demonstrating right here. So basically I have a scene, it's going to spawn a ton of bullets when the game starts. What I'm doing right here is preloading the scene into a variable at the top. You could argue that this should be a constant, so you could do it that way as well. But either way, I'm working with a direct path to the scene, which you obviously obtain by right-clicking the scene and copying the path. And I don't like this because if I rename the scene at all, or I move the scene in my file system, then the script is going to break. So you might be thinking like easy way around it. You just use the UID of the scene instead. So copy UID, paste it in the path here. And this way I can rename the file and move it around without the path breaking. But I still have the issue where if I have multiple scripts that are trying to load the same scene, like let's say I add a weapon that's going to shoot this bullet scene, then all of a sudden I'm going to have two separate places where I preload the exact same scene. And personally, I think that's kind of messy. So the way around Around it is I make this constants singleton. It's literally just a script. If you don't know how to do a singleton, go to project settings and on the globals tab, you can add it as a singleton, meaning it's just available to the entire project. You can access it from anywhere. But what I typically do is put all of my scene paths or UIDs inside of a dictionary inside of this script. So you can see I have a scene paths dictionary and I just have a key called bullet. This obviously just corresponds to the UID for that bullet scene. Scene. but this has a couple benefits. So the first major one is this is stored in one place. So if I have multiple different scripts or places that I'm trying to load the scene, they can all access it the same way and it's referring to the same UID value. So for example, that would look like going into my level one and instead of preloading my UID, I would do something like preload constants dot scene paths dot bullets. So obviously this is cleaner because multiple objects are going to be accessing the same variable or constant, but it has another benefit of just being more readable. So I'd much rather look at like constants scene paths bullets literally has the name of the scene in the code than looking at some random UID string like I had before, because a lot of people do not like this about UIDs where you have to hover over to see what this is actually referring to and maybe your scene has a different name. So once again, by doing this, it it's more consistent, it's cleaner, everything's in one place if the UID ever changes, and it's also beneficial because it's so much easier to read than the other method. So expanding a bit more upon this, you can use this constants script for a lot more than just the scene paths. So I'm just going to do a quick example of what I do for enemies. So I'll typically have a constant called like enemy info. But what I can do is put a little more info inside of this dictionary than just the path to the scene. So kind of what I'm trying to explain is like, if I had a slime enemy, I wouldn't just give the path to the scene, I could set this value to another dictionary, and then inside of here, I could have scene path. But this data structure now allows me to put more information tied to this one enemy entry. So a common thing, like if you have an enemy spawner, you might want to know the cost of an enemy before you actually instantiate the scene. So you could do something like that, where you could put like cost, and this will give the enemy's cost. And this is the same thing again, but we're bundling more information inside of this constant. But that's going to be it for this video. Just a cool pattern I thought I would share. But yeah, if you guys have any other cool things you could do with a constant, singleton. Let me know in the comments. I'd love to check them out and maybe make some more videos on these types of design patterns. Quick shout out to all the channel members. You guys are awesome and I really appreciate your support. If you do want to become a channel member and get early access to videos and other benefits, you can check out the link in the description. I also have a link to the Discord server if you want to join that or my website where I have a blog post on my current game and also a link if you need help with Godot. I do offer like one-on-one -on -one tutoring. So if you think you could learn something from me, make sure to check out that link and I would be happy to help you out. But anyways, thank you for watching the video and I will see you in the next one.